It seems like the baby has something to say. At the celebration for my son's 100th day since birth, my 8-year-old niece began to say this while glancing at my husband. Can you tell me what the baby is saying? When my niece said, sure, cheerfully, she began to say the most astonishing things. In the midst of our relatives murmuring, my husband turned pale and trembled slightly. No wonder, as the niece had figured out an outrageous plan that should have been known only to my husband. And I clenched my trembling fist in surging anger. My name is Jennifer, I'm a 24 year old housewife. I married my husband Robert a year and a half ago, who was 2 years older and a company employee and we had a son, Benjamin. Every day I was busy with unfamiliar parenting, but we three were living happily. My sister and her husband who lived nearby frequently came to our house and have been a great help, assisting with household chores and providing companionship since I was pregnant. While talking to my sister one day, I heard something shocking from her. That was, my niece Emily, who was 8 years old, had a strange power. One day, when my sister was going out with Emily, Emily seriously suggested a different route, saying, It would be better to go this way because there will be an accident if we go the usual way. Out of precaution, my sister followed Emily's advice. The next day, they found out from the news that a massive accident involving multiple cars had happened on the route they were supposed to take. My sister was scared when she thought about what would have happened if she hadn't believed Emily's words. In addition to that, Emily had also predicted that a burglary would occur in the house next door, and it did happen. The neighbor, who was persuaded by my sister in advance, had evacuated to her parents' house with her valuables on that day, so no harm was done. However, as someone who's not a fan of the occult, I was scared when I heard my sister's story and didn't believe that Emily had a mysterious power. I also told my husband about Emily's story, but he didn't take it seriously and just shrugged it off saying, Wow, that's amazing. Around the time I was pregnant, my husband started coming home drunk late at night more and more often. I'm sure Robert will change once the baby is born and he becomes a father. That's what I was hoping for, but nothing changed even after the birth. We'll raise the child together after he's born. Robert's words, which had been like a mirage, were all left to me to handle after the birth. What's worse, my son, who had finally fallen asleep, often woke up because of Robert's loud voice saying, I'm home, when he came home drunk. I ended up having to continue to soothe my crying son Benjamin in my arms. Hey, could you please moderate your drinking and come home a little earlier? Benjamin wakes up, you know. I can't help it. I have work socializing. Do you realize who's providing for our life? Don't complain all the time. Upon hearing my husband's yelling, my son started crying even more. Be quiet, Benjamin. Jennifer, you're his mother. Calm Benjamin down. I was angered by that comment, but there was no point in arguing with my husband who was drunk and overconfident. So I had no choice but to go to the bedroom and put my son to sleep. Two weeks later, on my husband's day off, my sister and niece came to meet my son for the first time. Upon seeing little Benjamin, my niece, Emily, cooed. Aw, he's so tiny and cute. But after a while, she started glancing at my husband, Robert. Emily, what's up? Um, Jennifer, the baby seems to have something to say. Emily whispered to me, saying, Keep this between us. Don't let Robert know. Upon hearing what she said, I was so astonished that I lost my words and found myself staring at my husband. Robert, oblivious to all of this, looked rather confused. But babies can't talk yet. That's the truth! That's what I'm telling you! But still... He doesn't want to leave mom, so he's warning you about dad! I couldn't believe the unrealistic story, but my niece was so serious with tears in her eyes that I couldn't help but worry. So, after my sister and niece left, I asked my husband, Are you hiding something from me? He quickly denied it. Why would you suddenly bring up something like that? Huh? I was just asking. I'm not hiding anything, and I'm not doing anything that should worry you. Please rest assured. Well, alright then. Contrary to his words, his eyes were clearly dodging, and his demeanor was suspicious. Then my husband, who never usually does this, started changing our son's diaper himself, and I felt even more out of place. Could it be? Is Robert hiding something from me? The mysterious words Emily had said wouldn't leave my mind, and I started to feel uneasy about my husband. The next day, after my husband went to work, my sister and niece suddenly showed up at my house. Sorry for coming so suddenly, Emily insisted on coming to Jennifer's place. My sister looks apologetic, but my niece's expression was serious. Don't apologize, sis. Welcome. Emily, please come in. When I nodded, my niece neatly arranged her shoes and entered the house, looking fondly at Benjamin, who was sleeping in the crib. But while I was preparing a drink in the kitchen, I noticed that my niece had gone to my husband's study and was staring at one point. Emily, what's going on? Jennifer, it's hidden here. What? 
When I followed my niece's pointing finger to my husband's bookshelf, I found his hidden diary and some documents tucked between the books. I had no idea my husband kept a diary, but I couldn't help but peek inside, even though I felt bad about it. There, in vivid detail, was a shocking plan my husband had been secretly concocting. I can't believe he was planning something like this. I was scared, my hands were shaking, and at that moment, I finally realized that Emily's mysterious power that my sister had told me about was real. When I showed the diary to my sister, she was surprised, but she gently held my hand and said, It's okay, I will protect you, Jennifer. Because I'm worried about you, Jennifer, can Emily and I come here whenever Robert is off work? Of course, sis, thank you. As I felt reassured by my strong sister, tears started to flow. My niece was looking up at me, worried. I'm sorry for doubting you before, sis. Emily's words were true, weren't they? I told you, didn't I? But I'm really glad we caught it before it got serious. That's true. It's all thanks to Emily. Thank you. Not at all. You're welcome. Although I returned a smile to my niece who was smiling shyly, I felt my love for my husband gradually turning into resentment. I won't let this go. I'll get back at him. Thinking this, I decided to take revenge on my husband at our son's first meal ceremony, where both of our parents would be present. From then on, my sister and niece would come to our house whenever my husband was off. However, my husband, who had been friendly at first, gradually became grumpy. Eventually, he started wanting to go out to be alone with me, even when my sister and niece were there. Hey sis, do you mind taking care of little Benjamin for a while so Jennifer and I can go on a date, just the two of us? No, that's impossible, Robert. Benjamin will just cry nonstop without his mama, right? But I think Jennifer needs a break sometimes too. Even just getting outside and breathing in the fresh air could be refreshing. Well, in that case, there's no need to go out and about. Why don't you two go out into the backyard and get some fresh air? It's such a beautiful day, it'll definitely feel good. My sister always had a clever rebuttal that left him without a comeback, careful not to upset him. That's when I started noticing that Robert seemed to be irritable all the time. Then, we finally reached the day of Benjamin's first bite ceremony. For this special occasion, my parents, my sister, and her husband, and my in-laws gathered at our home. I prepared a meal with all my heart and began the ceremony by placing the dishes on Benjamin's special eating utensils. Benjamin, look over here. Ha <laughs> ha so cute. Robert, completely smitten with his son, was filming the event with a beaming smile. My father-in-law looked at him with a delighted expression and said, Robert, you're such a great father. My mother-in-law, with tears in her eyes, nodded in agreement. Our son, not really understanding what was going on, seemed happy to be surrounded by everyone. And after the ceremony, we all decided to have a meal together. In the warm and friendly atmosphere, my niece Emily wasn't eating much, she just sat quietly watching Benjamin. Here you go, Emily, your favorite orange juice. My sister tried to distract Emily and talk to her, but Emily didn't respond. I started to worry if she was sensing something again, and that's when it happened. Robert, do you love money more than Jennifer? With Emily's words directed at my husband, the lively atmosphere came to a standstill, and everyone froze in their seats, their eyes fixed on Emily. Emily, why would you say such a thing? Because the baby told me so. My sister and I exchanged surprise glances, but everyone else seemed confused. Come on, Emily. Little Benjamin can't talk yet, can he? You shouldn't tell lies, okay? Robert, sitting next to her, was laughing as he patted Emily's head, but she angrily pushed his hand away. It's not a lie. The baby said, Daddy's trying to get money by pushing Mommy from a high place. Daddy? Me? No way. I would never do such a thing. Benjamin said, I love mommy so much, stop it, daddy. Upon hearing Emily's words, everyone's faces went blank. Among them, only Robert became pale, his lips trembling. That's absurd, stop making things up. Suddenly angry, Robert banged on the table. Emily's face tensed, and Benjamin looked as if he was about to cry. I wanted to keep things harmonious until the end of the meal, but it seems that's impossible. I stared at my husband with cold eyes. You've been funneling company expenses to a hostess, haven't you? Huh? What, what are you talking about? I thrust a diary I had found on my bookshelf at my husband, who was looking dumbfounded. It's all written here. Do you plan to deny it? That's, that's about a subordinate at a company. There's no way I would do something so stupid. My husband's forehead was covered with beads of sweat as he strained to make an excuse with a strained smile. Moreover, reading someone else's diary without permission is the lowest thing you could do. It's a violation of privacy, isn't it? I don't have to be blamed by a monster like you for such a thing. Huh? What do you mean? Are you still pretending to be ignorant? 
You've been dipping your hand into the company's finances and planning a horrific scheme to cover it up before it gets discovered. I opened the page of the diary where the plot was written, shoved it in front of him, and he averted his eyes. Hmph, <laughs> so what? That's a story idea I had when I was thinking of writing a novel. A mere diary doesn't serve as any proof. Oh really? Can you still say that after seeing this? I took out a certain document. Do you recognize this? This is the life insurance policy you've been hiding. Why did you take out $100,000 worth of insurance on me? What were you planning to do? Th that is... You plan to pay off the expenses you embezzled with the insurance money you'd get after you made me disappear. Isn't this solid proof? No, well... Actually, it was all revealed to me when my niece whispered in my ear for the first time when she came to see my son. Robert is planning to take Jennifer to a high place because he wants money and push her from behind. I couldn't trust my husband from the moment I heard those words. Both sets of parents stared at the situation with shocked expressions. Cornered by me, he couldn't say anything in response and hung his head, but suddenly he clung to my leg and began to prostrate himself. Jennifer, I'm sorry. Please pay back the money I misused from the company for me. Why should I have to do that? Don't say things like that. We're a couple, aren't we? If the company finds out, I'll be fired. Then how will we live? My husband had lightly considered my life for his own safety. I regretted deeply why I had gotten together with such a man. I can't be a couple with a scary person like you anymore. Let's divorce for the sake of Benjamin, because it's a bad influence. I shoved the filled out divorce papers in front of my husband and claimed $20,000 in damages and $500 a month in child support. No way, Benjamin is still small, isn't he? It's not a joke to pay such a large amount of money on top of getting a divorce. Come on, stop your fussing and sign the divorce papers quickly. The miserable sight of my husband throwing a tantrum like a child, crying, No, no, and scattering tears made me nauseous. Then, my father-in-law, who had been silent until now, shouted at my husband, Robert, cut it out. Perhaps as a father, he could no longer stand to see his son's shameful behavior. And my husband, who was told by his father-in-law that you have no right to refuse divorce and compensation, reluctantly signed the divorce papers. After that, my in-laws repeatedly bowed to me, took my husband, and left the house. The next day, I submitted the divorce papers to the municipal office, and I contacted my ex-husband's company and reported that he was misusing the company's expenses. After that, my ex-husband's misdeeds came to light and he was apparently fired from the company. My ex-husband, in order to pay alimony, child support, and compensation to his company, had to sell his house. He's currently living in and working as a construction worker from dawn till dusk. I thought about reporting this incident to the police, but the only evidence I had was what my husband had written in his diary. Instead, I decided to be grateful that my niece and son were able to prevent it from happening. Now, I'm back in my parents' house living a peaceful daily life with my son. My sister and niece visit my son almost every day, and I can't help but smile when Emily tells me, Benjamin says he's happy to be with mom all the time. Looking at my son laughing heartily, I pledged in my heart to continue pouring out smiles and to protect him firmly with my own two hands.